These are the Kamai for the Togaku Ryu Nimpo Taijutsu. Now, keeping your inner intention clear to your opponent, also observing proper ma'ai, specific to whatever that technique or condition may be, is what's most important when training kamai. Please do not approach this training as simply striking a pose or moving in between uh, different techniques and, and kind of this sort of loose idea of what kamai is. It's critically important that you understand that it's about your inner intention as well as distance. Now, the next thing to understand is that the key characteristic behind the Nimpo Taijutsu is going to be rooted in escape. As well, the Taijutsu is fundamentally founded in Kotoyu Kopo Jutsu and Gyokuru Koshi Jutsu. So you will see the overlap and similarities from those traditions within both the Kamai and all of the Taijutsu to follow. Let's get started with the five Kamai of the Nimpo Taijutsu. Each Kamai will be demonstrated with the weapon unique to the Togakure Ryu that's uh, held in the hands called the Shuko. The first Kamai is Ichi no Kamai. The intention behind this Kamai is to not let your opponent get near. With this Kamai, we'll be stepping back with the right foot, keeping the left side leading. Now, of course, you'll train this Kamai on each side. The important point is that as I step back, my hands go immediately to the line of my intention. My left hand stays directed at the height of one's heart, and about 90% of my weight is distributed back very, very deep onto the rear leg. So I have only about 10% remaining on the lead, and I'm very, very low and straight back here. So if we were to go to Seigan no Kamai Kotoryu, I straighten the arm out and lower the position of the fingers, no longer pointed at the eyes, but directed at the opponent's heart. And as I do this, I bring my weight very, very low and very deep back. You essentially have the same Kamai. Intention, however, changes from uh, controlling your opponent's intent to not letting them come near, keeping your opponent at bay. The next kamai is Hirai Chimoji no Kamai. The feeling here is one of wrapping your opponent or allowing them to go by. Now, this is very different than we see the Hirai Chimoji of other Ryuha such as Kukishinryu, Dakin Taijutsu, we have a feeling of protecting someone important behind us. So the intention and the body language has to be completely different. In Kotoryu, Kopojutsu, we see Hirachi Moji no Kamai having some similarity, wrapping your opponent, uh, but also keeping your perceptions wide. Here, the feeling is wrapping your opponent, but letting their attack or their energy pass by you, not letting them grab you, not letting them secure you. So it's a very, very different feeling than the other lineages that use the same posture. However, the body position is the same. The hands are at the same height as the eyes. And as always, we want to be able to see our hands as we're looking forward, having strong field vision, being able to see at 180 degree uh, sight in our peripheral field or more. The knees aren't bent too deep, but the legs are soft and ready to respond in either direction quickly. And this is Hirai Chimonji no Kamai. The next Kamai is Hachimonji no Kamai. 
And the feeling one has in this Kamai is to strongly defeat your opponent. With this Kamai, I'll be stepping back, putting 60% of my weight into the rear leg, 40% onto the lead. The lead arm is directed at the opponent's eyes, similar as in the Sega no Kamai of the Kopo Jitsu. But the right hand, in this case, comes up directly over the forehead with the fingers closed. If I didn't have Shuko on, it would be an Eboshi Ken in this manner. Since I'm wearing shuko, I can't even make a conventional fist with this on my hands, so it's boshiken. No different, it's the same. And the feeling here is to strongly defeat the opponent. You may witness a similarity here with the kodachi or the tanto, where you're in this jodo no kamai, and again, the feeling is to come down and cut your opponent with one powerful and single cut to be able to cleave whatever is uh, in front of you with a single downward cut. There's a very similar feeling here with Hachimonji no Kamai. The feeling is to strongly defeat your opponent. This is Hachimonji no Kamai. The next Kamai is called Hapogakure no Kamai. The feeling and intention behind this Kamai is to be able to scatter Metsubushi, or blinding powder, in all directions. Similar to the Kopo Jitsu Hoko no Kamai, my feet are at a 90 degree angle with one another and the hands are held up over the head. But with this Kamai, my hands are closed and they're closed softly as though I'm holding an egg in each hand. So if I squeeze too tight, obviously I'll break the egg and if I keep my hands too loose, then I'll drop the egg. So just soft. And they're just natural. They're not facing outward per se, they're not concealing inward, just natural like this. And from here, I wanna have the feeling of being able to scatter in any direction uh, powder. Now, you'll notice when I demonstrated this Kamai, I was both stepping forward and stepping backward. I would encourage that this Kamai is somewhat always in motion. So, I can step forward into it, I can step back into it, I can turn my body, but the feeling remains the same and the posture is the same, where I have a feeling of scattering blinding powder in any direction. This is Hapo Gakure no Kamai. This brings us to the final Kamai called Ton So no Kamai. And the feeling one should have in this kamai is to escape behind and hide, or to move away backward uh, and conceal oneself.
as I'm stepping back with my left foot, my head doesn't turn with the step. I keep my nose in the direction of my intent. However, my right hand becomes concealed inside my jacket in this manner. I'm dropping back, possibly with the feeling of deploying a weapon or grabbing something to throw or distract someone who's trying to pursue me. And the feeling is to escape backward in this direction. So as you can see, as I transition back, the hand follows, but my head stays in this direction. And this is Tonsono Kamai. These are the five Kamai of the Nimpo Taijutsu. Once again, I want to remind you, don't just train the poses. You have to train the mindset, the intention behind it, what the Kamai means, the physiology behind it, the body language behind it. Also, the Ma'ai, or the critical distance. You have to consider this while you're training each Kamai. How would you want your opponent to move? Uh, what conditions would you be in that would uh, demand this Kamai? this intention. This is extremely important because if you train Kamai without that in place and you just train postures, you're just kind of doing sort of a low level exercise and there's not a whole lot of value to it. So I really want to encourage you to make sure that specifically within this Kamai training you do that, but you also make sure that regardless of the Yuha you're studying, that this be in place with your Kamai training. Okay, let's move forward into the Ukemigata.